Okay, it looks like it worked and we are live. I'm gonna give a minute for it to catch up. I just had a little glitch. Um, I copied something wrong when I put it in and the stream wasn't working. So thankfully I was able to update it and refresh and it worked fine. So uh, sorry that I'm just a minute or two late. I've been out of town and out of the groove for far too long. So getting back in the habit. So hello everybody. I see that it's on here now. Let me make sure that I get it loaded on my phone as well. Yeah, Leah was just asking me, is everything good? Are you coming? Yeah, just apparently I copied and pasted something wrong into Zoom and so it just wasn't showing up. So I got it fixed now and we're good to go. YouTube on my phone so I can see comments and welcome everybody. Um, once again, sorry for being just a minute or two late. Let's see, there we are. Okay. Yay, it's working there too. Okay. Love when it finally works. So hello. I saw lots of people on there. I saw a couple of new uh, friends joining us today. Totally missed them there in the comments just because I'm late. So if you were new, welcome. We are very glad you're here. We had um, a week off from lives last week. And then the week before we only did one live. So um, we're kind of on getting back in the groove, at least for me. And Kind of miss doing that. We had a fun week. Uh, Leah and I got to meet up with Kinnery in Houston this past week. So we enjoyed hanging out in person. There have, were lots of um, lots of planning, lots of fun time together, maybe some late nights, uh, staying up and, you know, hanging out together, uh, plenty of good food. <laughs> it was a good week and it was really good to be back in person and all together again. So um, so a couple things. Um, let's just make sure I remember. Welcome. I see Margaret there first time. And then Anne, I saw you're one of the newer viewers. Welcome, welcome. Um, all right. So if you have not joined us before, or if you've forgotten since we've been gone a week, we give away a $15 gift card every live. Um, you'll see the name Leah behind the pink fresh name. She will pick that winner at the end. The way you enter for that is just leaving um, lots of comments in the chat. Uh, chat with each other. If you have a question, feel free to ask. I may or may not see it, but if uh, Leah, who is again behind the pink fresh name, um, does a really great job of catching any of those that I miss. If somehow we accidentally uh, both miss, just because sometimes the chat can get moving pretty quick, uh, I promise we're not ignoring, just leave that um, question or comment again and we'll catch it on the second time by. Um, and then if you can, if you have somewhere that you can share this video, there's a little share button somewhere. I think it's over, somewhere over here. Uh, it's hard to point. That's on a laptop. I don't know on a phone. There's this little share button and it'll give you a link. And if there's somewhere that you can click and share it, whether it's in a message or email to a friend on your own social media in a group, as long as you know, it's allowed with the group rules, then that's another um, great way. And then just come back and leave us a comment and let us know um, that you did that. And then just like I've seen a few people do it, let us know if this is your first time. We love to welcome you. I know I might um, again, miss some of those. So I'm going to do a blanket welcome for anyone I already missed. And then I see Billy Sue Woolley on there as well. Um, and that's her first time. And I think that's everything. I think we covered it all. So I've already turned on my hot foil machine. It looks like it's close to hot. I'm going to flip my camera around, especially since I'm just a minute or two late here. We're going to do a tiny bit of hot foiling. So we'll start there for our sentiment and then move on to um, some different things. So camera, time to switch. Get this over out of the way. Let me just do a quick little fix of my settings there. There we go. Make sure that everything shows up well. And thank you for sharing, Eva. We appreciate that. All right, and I'm going to uh, pull this foil machine over a little closer. I'm hoping it'll show up at least enough on here for you to kind of get the idea. Oops, hold on. Try not to move my lights too much here. Okay. I think we've got just enough cord link. My plug-in just barely reaches over here. All right, so we are gonna use um, some items from our newest release, Thumbs Up. Leah just mentioned, that's the other thing I forgot. We love if you hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying um, watching this, that just helps more people find it. 
um, both now and on the replay, of course. All right, so we're gonna use the beautiful Beyond Measure set today. That's gonna be the main item that we're using. And there's a stamp, a die, and a layering stencil. And it just looks beautiful when you get it all done. This is actually um, one of the, maybe the only set um, from this release that I hadn't had a chance um, to create with yet. So my set is brand new and we'll be working on that in a minute. I just see that my platform is ready. And then the other thing that I haven't used is the Sentiment Suite, the new hot foiled thank you word. And then of course, one of the cover plates and an older essential die that's gonna make a square card this morning or afternoon today. I'm confused on what time of day it is. But we are gonna use, so this new thank you hot foil, it coordinates with the older um, Sentiment Suite, the thank you die. And those dies have a detailed die cut and then a shadow layer. And we designed these hot foil plates instead of making a separate just die to go with this. So you had to buy something else. This way you get the best of both. You can hot foil and die cut, or you can just die cut both layers. So it's fun to have the option of adding um, the die cut layer to there as well. All right. I am going to put both of these on here. And I found, I'm going to set my timer there. I found with the little delicate words, if I put them, so hold on, before these get too hot, let me adjust this here real quick. They're getting a little hot. If I put them on like this, I'm going to have to redo the timer. I think the second one shifts more as it goes through. If I put them vertically like that so that they both kind of get grabbed at the same time when they go through, that didn't work. Um, I have, I just have better luck with them going through. And then the other thing is make sure you leave enough space between them to die cut around. So that's also kind of helpful. I'm going to just pin down a piece of cardstock. I should have some scraps, but I was not prepared enough. And then I'm going to foil it in our ever popular favorite foil color, Aura. Kind of the one that Lee and I can never get enough of. And I feel like it's the best starter color of foil because it's almost foolproof, at least in my experience. So not as tricky as some of the um, colors that have a little more, I mean, none of them are hard, but some of them can be a little quirkier and trickier. And I almost just boiled my plate because I almost put that down the wrong way. Let me get my die cut machine up here and we're gonna get our foil ready. I always like to, now that my timer's off, I'm hoping you can see that down in the corner. I always like to pop this loose because notice how those shift and move. If I pop it loose first, then I can put my foil and my cardstock and I have less chance of it moving anymore before I get it in my hot foil or in my die cut machine. Okay, so run that through. Let's see how that came out. Beautiful. Okay. I was just kind of rubble with my finger because if there's any little nooks and crannies that I have any overfoiling, then I can kind of get those out. See that aura? It's the perfect um, kind of hint of gold. I love how it has a bit of a rainbow iridescence, but it's kind of the perfect, um, somewhat neutral color. And then just for fun, we're going to go ahead and do. We don't have a crazy lot of work to do today. So I figure it's a good time to do um, the solid hot foil plate as well. And then we can foil the reverse of that. So let's get that on there and heating. That will take a few minutes. So while that heats up, I'm gonna kind of scooch that off to the side because I like to give that plenty of time to heat. And while we wait for that to heat, I'm gonna go ahead and die cut this. And yes, I see that Leah just mentioned. Um, so I did, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. Um, at the last minute, I just barely squeaked in and got my supply list in the vi uh, video description. So that'll be on the live and the replay. Um, so if you have any questions about what I'm using or the ink color or anything 
um, like that, feel free to check that um, as a reference. I almost forgot about it. Still a little bit on out of town mode. So I'm going to blame that. Um, but I did get it in there just in time. So um, yeah, you can still ask if you didn't see and we can always um, an answer, but sometimes we miss it. So it's kind of nice to know you can find it there. All right, I'm going to line up that die there, take these in place. I noticed the U, I didn't even realize it's upside down. Not that it matters once it die cuts, it'll be, I'll spin it around right side up, but okay. Just die cut those out for those of you ready. And I don't know which version I'll use on my finished card today, but this way we'll have both options. See, Cindy, and that's quite often the case. Sometimes I do prefer the reverse foiled. So if you are new, oh, and the tape I'm using, uh, Jay Toby that asked. Uh, this is, I found this on Amazon. It's highlighter tape and it comes in a really cheap pack. And it's, I love that it doesn't damage my cardstock. It comes up easy. Um, it doesn't hold, um, if I'm, Die cutting something that I'm more worried about slipping, I might not use it for that, but just for basic little dies, I use this all the time. But like a big um, washi die or something like that, um, I might not um, use it, but I, I do use that pretty frequently and love it. So, all right, what do we have here? Is that big enough? That's big enough. Good. And you see the other half of that cardstock there. You put these away. My hot foil plate's getting close to hot. I like to give it a little extra time just to make sure it's um, fully heated. And then um, whenever I use the solid foil plate, I always throw just a piece, an extra piece of the hammer mill 100 pound cardstock in between as a little bit of a shim. I just find it helps a little bit with um, the pressure on the solid foil plate. And yes, I use post-it tape a lot as well. So I have that highlighter tape, I've got post-it tape. Um, for things I need held down a little sturdier, this is um, just scotch. I don't know if you can see on their delicate surface tape, it's purple. Um, so I'll use this for a little bit more sturdy if I need to hold something down. Um, and it does a fairly good job of being somewhat gentle. So. Maybe not quite as good as some of the others, but all right. Pretty sure this is heated enough. So let's go ahead and go for this. Pop that on there. Add our cardstock. And I'm actually going to adjust my shim here because my foil goes a little over and I don't want to foil my shim. So I'll put my cardstock there and then we'll run this through. All right, and I like to go through and back with the solid foil plate. Normal foiling, I just go through the one. That just stuck on there. See that extra foil? I don't have that on my um, pieces now. Let's get that there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. We're done foiling for now. Unplug that and let's get this out of the way so I have a little more room on my desk. Limited desk space, you know. It's, oops, although I still will need this. So let's leave this out because we have to die cut this. All right, let's peel this off. And we have a perfect reverse foil image. So let's go ahead and die cut that. Since I did just remember that. And then we have both options ready and we can pick which one we prefer. And we'll go that into place. So one thing, um, obviously on this, you only wanna use the shadow layer on these guys. You could use the smaller layer, but it's basically gonna cut exactly the foiled area. So. My advice, if you want to use that, I would use, um, like this would be a perfect example. I have some little foiled scraps. So if you want foiled, you could use this more delicate one and die cut it. In fact, 
while we're running it through, let's just do that for fun because I've got, got the technology. And then we'll have that. I mean, we're not wasting stops, right? So let's go ahead and run that through. Figure the less you waste, the better, right? So now, out of all that, I also have a little die cut detail piece. So Kind of that whole waste not want not idea. I love when I can do that. So now I can just die cut a white layer and I'll have a whole spare, whoops, spare detail. A little bit of tape on there. I have overlaps slightly and I have no fingernails. There they are. There we go. This one out of there as well. Okay. So the little detail bits. So there's that that we can add those pieces on to. We've got so many options now. That would actually be, I love to do these layers on um, cutting the shadow layer from vellum as well. So that would actually be another option. Let's see, Gev, um, the distressed look. Yes, Leah just linked right the video we have. So generally you either need more heat or more pressure. And that's my, um, Always the first advice I give. Let's just see. I'm digging through my scraps here real quick to see if I have any. I do. Perfect. I have a little piece of vellum here. I'm just going to go ahead and cut those shadow layers and then I'll have that fully ready whenever. I might even decide to use that version today. Who knows? Everyone's chiming in with great advice for a solid foil plate. It, um, you kind of have to dial it into your, your machine, your whatever you're using to die cut. Um, but once you get it working right, it's the best thing ever. Okay. So all with our hot foiling, even using our little bitty pieces of scraps since I was kind of generous, we've got all of those different options. Let me pull these down a little and I'll move my die cut machine. Okay, so now we can pick which one of these a little later we want to use. Um, and I'll have these all ready to put on other cards, which is beautiful. Let me kind of show this a little quicker. So making use of our scrap extra foiling with the solid foil plate, being that it's not glued in place. So you're just gonna have to kind of get the idea. And then we have our original foiled version. And then of course, the reverse foiled. All right, I'm gonna slide these off to the side now. And let's go ahead and move on to stenciling. Exactly, Tiffany. That's exactly what we try and um, try and do. Let's see. Oh, Sharon. So, also check out your um, hot foil machine if you have a glimmer. I replaced mine once, um, and I got the new one, and the plate came out of the box warped, and I couldn't get it to work. Um, I swapped out and I got another one and it was great. It's kind of a weird quirk, but if you never, ever get good results, reach out to Spellbinders. Odds are they will be able to either help you um, or if they're, I mean, if it really seems like it's warped or something's off, um, just, just check with them. I guess that's my best advice. But yes, we try and um, try and make lots of options for our sets. So this particular one does not have a um, hot foil version. 
it's a stamp and a die and a stencil. But some of our florals, we have hot foils, so you have that option, but you don't have to if you would rather um, rather stamp. Uh, some of them look beautiful with just the layering stencils and no stamp. Um, lots of options. See, and Julie, most people do, and like I said, every now and then I um, hear of someone who just is never able to get good results, and I was kind of surprised that one time that I had. So know that that is definitely um, the exception, not the rule. I'm using a really big piece of cardstock to stamp this, but um, I'm going to go with it anyway because I like that extra space to roll with. I'm going to stamp first and use my stencils to line up with it. So I'm going to stamp just with some gray ink so I have something to see to work with. Um, to line up, but then I'm gonna stamp over it at the end over the top. So this isn't gonna be the final. And I'm gonna use, this is releasing next month, I believe is the plan, the end of September. Um, this is our stamp press. So if you've never used a stamp press before, first of all, this was the first one I ever used. And I have no idea how I stamped without it. I mean, I did for a really long time, but I love it because it helps you get consistent stamping pressure. And it's, I feel like it's less work than leaning over and putting all my weight into it. And that right there is a good enough impression. If I was really worried about it, I'd stamp again, but because I know I'm going to stamp at the end, I just need enough to line everything up. So um, Sharon, I, we recommend hammer mill, um, hundred pound cardstock. I imagine everyone will be chiming in on that. It's nice and smooth. Um, if you're having trouble, you can, Spellbinders has some specialty cardstock that is rather foolproof. Um, it doesn't work as well for stenciling. It's almost more of a UPO or photo paper, um, but that's something to try too if you're having having problems. All right, I am leaving my stamp set lined up in my MISTI because I'm going to stamp it at the end, and by leaving it lined up, then I know uh, I'm going to have perfect placement at the end when I'm all done. I know, right, Leah? That stamp tool. I I just it's so pretty. I love having it sitting on my desk. But seriously, it, it has helped me so much on just my stamping and I feel like it's made my life easier. So, okay, so the layering stencils here, this set has a total of five layering stencils. Um, they always come layered um, or numbered, sorry. I don't know if you can see up on the top. There's stencil numbers in the top and then little corner notches that if you're using a four and a quarter by five and a half um, piece of cardstock, basically an A2 card size, it'll perfectly line up to those if you're not using the stamp set first. So let's say you wanna go ahead and do all your stenciling and then just line up and stamp. Or if it's one of the sets that doesn't need the stamp, those alignment guides are gonna be your friend. Um, I'm using a bigger piece and I'm gonna line up to that. Um, now, one question we get a lot, um, you can just follow the order of the stencils. It'll work perfect. Uh, sometimes Lee and I like to mix up the order. There's no particular reason for that. Um, and I don't, you know, so like, for example, here, we've got the two flower layers. I wouldn't do the second flower layer before the first one, because it definitely makes more sense to do that first one. But sometimes I like to do, um, like on this stencil set, your stencil one and two are the greenery. And then three and four are the flowers. And then five is the extra layer on the greenery. I'm just going to swap it up because I want to do the flowers first. Like I said, no particular reason. It just kind of fit what I wanted to do today. So um, the stamp press tool. Oh, Debbie, I'm so glad. Um, I'm, I can't remember off the top of my head what the pricing is going to be um, for the stamp press tool, but I know it's going to be the best that we can do just based on what our costs are. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> Canary is not available. So I, I really have no idea on that, but I know it's going to be um, on par with whatever the running rate would be for those. All right, let me get my ink holder and I'm going really bold and bright on my colors. 
So I'm gonna start with bubble gum with my blending brush. And we're just gonna go for it. As I'm doing this, I'm realizing, I'm not quite sure how I wanna do that yet, but I'm kind of leaving the color not super dark in the center of those. And then the buds I'm making a little deeper because those would naturally be a little darker. But I'm kind of leaving, because I kind of want to do the flower centers. Um, I think I'm going to layer a yellow over that. So it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of um, pink over that, but I'm going to kind of get my concentration of color more around the outer edges. So I leave that center a little more open. Okay. Clean that off. I always use a microfiber cloth just to clean um, off excess ink. Let's see. When are the full size ink pads? To be quite honest, I haven't looked Eva, so I didn't realize I thought they all were in stock. So I'm not sure on the answer to that. Okay, here's our first layer. Nothing much to look at yet, but we've got that first layer of color on our flowers. So let's go ahead and move in finish. And this one helps a little because um, I'm basically lining it up to the flower center. So those are all covered, which conveniently means I'm not going to add extra color onto where I want to add that little bit of yellow for the flower centers. Okay. So let's, I'm going to use, I could use that, but I'm, I have a smaller brush. So I'm going to use this to make it a little easier kind of concentrate my color. Since I did that on the others, I want to kind of do the same on this where I make my color a little bit deeper. On this, I'm doing it around the outside. Not like crazy amount, but just making sure that my deepest concentration of color goes around the outside. Just to kind of keep it consistent. And that should do that. Uh, yes, Raspberry Bliss. I love that pink too. Um, who said that? A couple people. It's so bright and happy. Kind of irresistible. Okay, getting ready. And there is our detail layer on the flowers. So when we get to the final layer here for the detail of the green, that's when we'll hit the center of those. But let's let's go ahead and do our greens first. And I'm kind of kind of do a little bit of a mix of um, some aquas and greens for all of this. Okay. Do my best here to get this lined up. Keep in mind that as with all of our stamp sets, that um, we design them all to be a little bit on the whimsical side. So you know that they won't maybe necessarily line up utterly and completely perfect and that's okay. They're not supposed to, they're kind of um, made to color out of the lines a little bit. Give some more of that artistic look and allows more margin for error. I guess when I'm crafting too, I always love that I can give it that artistic look and it's meant to do that. Um, less pressure to, for perfection, right? What's that saying? Handmade, not Hallmark. Okay, this is Aquamarine. So I'm doing Aqua for this. The sun is beating into my craft room and I forgot to set up my fan to cool myself down. So it's hot in here. <laughs> I feel like I'm starting to melt and I have to pause and put my fan on if it keeps getting hot. All right, another layer there on our stencil. Let's do the other greenery layer. And this is where this set's kind of fun. Um, you do the two different 
bits of the greenery. And then the detail layer is the same for both of them. So this is where I'm gonna deviate a little bit and have some fun. I'm gonna switch over to one of our green family, which is meadow. And I think it's gonna go really well with the um, color I have planned for the next. But let me make sure, because I don't know what's on my brush from um, whatever the last time I used it. So I wanna kind of make sure that's cleaned off a little bit. And then we can get up here with meadow. And these are pretty small little detail pieces. So I'm not gonna focus too much on worrying about um, color variation, but just getting a little color on all of it. up on the comments there. Yep, layering stencils have changed crafting um, probably for a lot of people, but I know for me, I'm definitely a more lazy colorer because of that. All right, I hope you can see there how we've got more of the green and then the aqua. And the final stencil layer here, I'm gonna get that lined up and then I'll pull out the ink color. This one's nice and easy because you're gonna line up those three flower centers and then everything else is kind of just gonna do its own thing. So before I do um, the greenery, I'm gonna come in and do the center of those flowers and I've got sweet mustard. I'm just gonna use a little tiny detail brush. I'm not gonna mask off before because I'm not too worried about if I get a little yellow on the greenery, oh well. But I didn't want, if you look at the stencil packaging, they look fine with the green on the inside, but I just wanted to switch it over to yellow instead. Just I wanted to enough. Um, we could have made that a whole separate stencil, but that would have been basically three dots on a whole stencil. It would have added another layer and driven up the cost of the stencil. So we try and kind of, um, narrow that, oops, what am I doing? I don't need to remove that yet. I've still got the other layers, silly me. Anyway, so sometimes those little layers, you know, just saves some effort and then keeps the cost down a little. And all you have to do is some simple masking to keep the colors where you want them. So a little bit there and a tiny bit there. Okay, all those pieces are covered. Let's come in here with our final. This is the deepest of the aquas, and it's just a really deep green um, tidal pond. And I'm going to use my small brush again. You don't have to, but I think it's going to make it fun to come in and add uh, color deeper at some spots and kind of build up the intensity there at the base of the leaves. Some of these little ones, it's not gonna make as big a difference because they're pretty little, but more of the larger size and aqua ones, might as well hit it there. Okay, this was a pretty small uh, layer. <laughs> right, what Leah said, paper crafting, stencil with a layer, I would way rather mask and have that extra money to spend on something else. You start adding all the math up on that and pretty soon you've got a whole nother stencil set. All right, this is our final reveal here of our stenciled florals. And they look beautiful with all those soft layers, but we're not gonna quit there. We're gonna stamp over the top. So let's clean some stuff out of my way here on my desk. And I'll clean up my stencils a little bit later. For now, pull that misty back out. And we're going to stamp over the top. It's always the slightly uh, scary part, but I always try really hard to just make sure that I've got it lined up over in the corner. And then I double check that it still looks like it matches up perfectly. And it sure looks like it does. So the moment of truth. Grab that detail black and the stamp press and let's go for it. 
could also heat emboss, but I just kind of thought it would be a fun one to have that really crisp outline in the detail black. So, all right, please match up. It looks perfect. Oh, yes. Okay. And I'm a light stamper, so I'm going to stamp a few times. Since I've already got it lined up in my Misty, I might as well. I'm even going to go, I'm going to go one more time just because I want to make sure I have a really good dark outline there. Okay, I think that does it. So as pretty as that looked already, look at how much that helps just having that dark crisp outline after you're all done with the stenciling. I love it. Love what that adds. Okay, real quick, we're gonna clean off stencil, a little bit of homemade stamp cleaner. And a nice, super soft toothbrush just to get it into all the nooks and clean. Detail Black um, is a hybrid ink. So Leah and I always love to clean our stamps quickly when we're using it so that we don't have to deal with uh, it being harder to clean later. And normally I have my bossy stamp, but I just got home and I haven't been in here crafting. So I have a spray bottle of water. I'm just gonna, that's kind of my cheater quick way to get it damp and um, be able to clean all that off. Beautiful. Okay, we're gonna put that away. I like to clean up as I go as much as I can. Something I won't put you through cleaning all my stencils, but I promise that will be happening very quickly when I'm done. And then the final piece here we need, is out of the way, because we're done there. <laughs> is the die cut. And this is so new, I haven't even pulled it off of my packaging yet. I just like to get rid of that little piece of tape too because I don't want to keep dealing with it, so. Same sample. Um, the stamp. Pretty good job. Um, pink ones. I'm just going to give you a quick demo here. This is just isopropyl we got from the store. It does such a great job of just taking that ink right off of there. Hopefully you can see that. Even when I've had them where they've sat on there for a while, um, it just gets it really well. A little bit down on the bottom there. So that's our favorite way to clean stencils, um, especially if they're at all stained. See how that just had that bright um, raspberry bliss, the really deep pink, and there's not a trace of it on there now. I mean, maybe a trace if you really look, but it's not going to come off or taint anything. Oh, I think my internet connection was unstable there just for a second. It looks like it's leveled off yet, so or leveled off again. So hopefully, hopefully it does. That's fine from now on. Okay. Let's get this die lined up and get this die cut and move on to assembling the rest of our card. Okay. Just gonna take my time and get this die lined up as carefully as I can. all the little spots and match it up really well. I'm going to use an extra piece of tape just to make sure it's not going anywhere. Then I'm going to run this over and die cut it in my Gemini. So I will be right back. Okay, here 
here we go. All the pieces out of there. I just changed my plate and my um, put a fresh bottom plate on my Gemini, so it's cutting really nice, which I love. And there's a bunch of little fun detail bits in this die, which is part of what I love about getting coordinating dies, is you get all these fun little detail bits um, that you wouldn't be able to get if you just fussy cut the image. All right, I think I got all those. Actually, it's not too bad on this one. All right, so here is our finished die cut piece with all those pretty, really deep, bold colors. I love it. We're gonna create a square card. So I already have, actually have two versions because I wasn't sure which one I would prefer using. Pretty sure it's gonna go for the white. And then I did pre-die cut the largest of the stitched scallop squares. And that's gonna go on, that's why I'm really leaning towards, because I think if I put it on the pink, yeah, the pink is just too busy. Okay, so we're gonna do that. My plan is we're gonna do a little, it's that scary, not much, because on the uh, square card, I only have a little bit off the bottom here that it looks like I need to trim off. So it's not gonna be that bad, thankfully. And we might tuck that bottom in. Let's just go ahead here. I can already tell I want to cut it there, there, and probably a little bit there. So now we can slide it in there and kind of get a feel for how that's going to fit. That's going to be kind of perfect through there. And then for just a little bit of texture, I do have, and this is of course an A2, but this is that elongated rectangle. I kind of just want to tuck it back there again, just for a little bit of texture on the background. It actually doesn't show as much as I thought it would. So I'm, now I'm having, having second thoughts. Let me ponder this a little here. Now I'm suddenly going, maybe I don't want to make a square card. Maybe I'm gonna, now that I cut that already, but I can still, I can still make that work. Do I want to switch? And maybe just turn this into a frame on an A2 size card. Let me grab a white card base and I'm gonna debate that because we just totally switch the plan. We'll still be using everything, but <laughs> Leah, yes, it's it was a stem. I didn't even cut any of the pretty florals. You know what? I'm kind of liking that. I'm kind of surprised, but I really do feel like I like that best. And then I can fit the thank you. We'll just tuck that around. Let's ponder where that's gonna go. I think I might like this in the reverse foiled for this one. This might be one of those times that, mm -hmm. I think I'm liking this. I think we're gonna change. So forget the square card idea. I'm gonna go with this and then we're gonna add, clean a little ink off of our brushes. I, this has been something I've loved doing lately, is using up some of the spare ink on my brushes. So let's go down in the bottom. Just, it gives a hint of color behind those cover plates. I'm not adding any more ink. It's just a way to clean off my brush a bit. And then we'll use the aqua up here in this corner. And it's just gonna help that cover plate pop a little bit more. But someone saying something about stenciling and I think that's kind of the idea of what I'm, oh yeah, there we go. That's what I wanna do. Don't you love when you have a plan and it changes? <laughs> At least we were able to make everything work that I already had in place for it. Okay, these are probably gonna pop up on some foam, but let's get this one adhered down. I'm just gonna stick some liquid glue. <clears throat> <laughs> Kelly, when you deadhead, flowers have to be deadheaded. If you don't, they will not keep growing. I discovered that the hard way. I always hated taking them off. And then I discovered that if 
I didn't do it, they just weren't happy. So, and you know what? It's paper and it's ink and it's so easy to redo if you change your mind. So I always figure the worst that happens is I redo it. And you all have seen me do it. If you guys, if anyone was at that live that one time, I've totally screwed up my stamping on that second layer. And you know what? Once you've done it once, it's really quick to go back and redo it. Even live and sweating pins and needles and <laughs> the most stressful circumstances. And I I wasn't live. It would have just been like, eh, no biggie. So be brave and try. The worst that happens is you redo it and you save that for something else if it doesn't work. Okay. I should be watching comments, but this is taking more focus than I intended. Okay. Oh, that was close. Let's line that up on there. I love that that liquid glue gives me just a moment to wiggle it into place. Well, let's smack a weight. I love using my uh, your stamp blocks just to hold those down for a minute until they dry a tiny bit. Okay. We're going to take this out of there. And I'm just going to grab an A2 panel that I can use as a template to line this up. So I'm going to leave. Yep, I'm going to leave the top and bottom because I don't mind if it slightly extends over. I'm going to trim the sides off, which I'm looking at this interestingly. I'm actually going to, I think it's going to cut it into two pieces, but we're going to just go for it. So a little bit there. I should have taped closer to it, but we're just rolling with it. And a little bit there. Figure it's going to be easier to cut it. Yeah. Cut it before I'm adhering it down. And I kind of want the added width. I could use the thin strips, but I want to hold these two layers together because I've got um, both pieces. So let's go ahead and pull this piece off. Okay, there's the first bit and it's all held together by foam tape now. Pull off the other side and do the same thing. Because these are in two separate um, pieces, if you aren't aware of how these die cut out. So by putting the over together, and one more little piece. If someone was asking about the glue, yeah. Precision. Okay, so there, I'm just gonna show that. Look at how pretty that cover plate, just a little inky below. And if you added a bit more ink and pink, merge just together pretty purple in the middle, but I didn't really want to add that purple tone on here. So yes, all right, I think if this works, I'm thinking, oh yes, we can actually squeeze these together a little so it really won't even on the top. I ah, love when that works. Um, Nanette, this, the Barely Arts glue actually comes 
with a little pin that works great. Okay, hold on, I got it. I'm just gonna adhere that down here first and then do the same on the bottom one. Um, so I have had no issues with it clogging. Sometimes if I'm gone for a week or something and I just leave the pin on it, actually it was closer to two weeks when I was in Hawaii and it didn't, it didn't clog. I just had to kind of wiggle the pin up and down a little bit to get it all smoothly flowing again. Oh, okay. That was really fun using the square to make a diamond. Never, ever, ever thought about doing that before, but it really worked well. Okay, and then we decided, we, how did we tack those in? I think I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna spin it that way because I've got those little, so we need to, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna cut a tiny bit more off of those stems just so they'll tuck under there and then kind of swirl around. I don't know why it's getting, is it getting blurry? I'm not getting any warnings of internet issues. So hopefully it's just, who knows? Maybe it's YouTube. We might never know. Okay, we're gonna add a little foam adhesive. It's gonna kind of keep, um, yes, Sharon, this is the stitched scallop squares. There's a link down below. We just turned it and trimmed off a little bit of the extra. I'm just gonna put foam adhesive on a few places here. I'm gonna kind of plan where I'm tucking this. Okay, there and there, maybe a little bit on the inside there. Don't need much actually. I like to keep putting it in and make sure I'm getting it all the places that I really want to there. A little bit at the base of this leaf there as well. Oops. Okay, and we're gonna call that good. Make sure we're happy with where that's tucking in. And then I'm gonna add I cut a little more off of that stem there on the bottom. Doing little tiny bits until it's the length I want there to tuck under. Okay. That's going to work. I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue at the bottom there. So when I tuck those under, they'll kind of hold in place. I want those popping out of my frame. And then I'll peel the backing off this foam. Then I'll make sure I get that bottom tucked under before I stick um, the top part down. Those are tucked under, so we're happy with placement there. Perfect. Just gonna curl up now. I didn't think to do it before I stuck them down, but I always like to curl up the um, greenery. And this has a little bitty stem, so I am gonna add a tiny bit of glue just to kind of keep that from coming loose. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this frame. I cut it from um, gold pearl uh, cardstock. So it's kind of shimmery and gold, but kind of a, a bit of a matte finish, which is um, kind of perfect for this because I didn't want it super mirror gold on here, but just enough to go really well with our sentiment. Okay, here's a little closer look of what we've got so far. And I think all we have left is our sentiment. It's got a, I guess I don't need that to pop up so much. I don't want to cover up my flowers too much. So I'm kind of leaning towards tucking this maybe over there on the side. Let's, let's play with it a little. I think, I really do think that's where it makes the most sense. We'll ponder right there as well. Actually, maybe a little more centered. Or one final, we could also go down along the bottom. <laughs> I still think I think my first pick is where I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it there. 
I'm going to add a tiny smidge of foam tape now behind that little piece of greenery because now I don't want it to curl up so much because I want to be able to put my sentiment on there and have that have a stable spot. So we're going to do it. We're going to put foam adhesive on the back of that. And it'll give us a little extra dimension. We love dimensions. I know I love a good floral card like this because like, um, who said that? And yes, birthday, all you have to do is switch the sentiment and you can totally change the whole purpose of your card. So girls are kind of the perfect um, multi-purpose. What are we doing for today? Oh, you know what? I started a minute or two late and I kind of got relaxed. So we might run just a minute or two over. Considering that we changed the whole size and shape of our card, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stress about it too much. But if you need to go, I totally stand. Great, and then all we need to do is add a little bit on here. So we're going to use the clear iridescent drop. And I think all I'm going to do on here, because there's a lot going on on this card. So I, and I know I just put yellow in the center of those flowers, but I really think all I want to just put that on the center of the flowers. So the masking and everything layer. Um, let's just try. Let's see. So I might change my mind and leave that low, but I really do think that I kind of like it. I don't know, though. That's not too bad either. Maybe I'm going to, I'd end up changing my mind after all. You kind of like those tucked around there. So in a little stretched out trio. So maybe we'll take those off and just do the ones on the side because then we leave that yellow showing. And I do kind of like that with the gold. Pop these back and I'll just really quickly glue those down and then spin the camera around and we'll get the winner on here for everybody that's been waiting for that. I love this clear iridescent um, bling. It's kind of been my new, new obsession. I mean, I love all of the pink fresh embellishments, but there's just something magical about these. They look like little, pretty little raindrops. Okay, and we are finished. I hope you enjoyed watching my. Uh, my brain switched gears in the middle of what we were working on, but I, I love this even better than the idea I had to start with. So I'm glad it came out like that. All right, I'm going to switch the camera around and we'll let um, Leah announce today's winner or pick it. So I can say that. Sorry about, I don't know what was going on with the reception. It's hot, it's clear, it's sunny. Our internet's good. Sometimes it's just kind of out of our control. So. I will just say I'm sorry for technology because that's about all we can do. Okay. Oh, Cindy, well, you know what? Keep in mind that some thought goes into this in advance. Like I pick all of what I'm gonna use and I pick uh, the ink color. So there's a little bit of extra time. Um, I mean, I know the actual creating of it takes an hour, but some things I had pre die cut. Um, so keep in mind that it might take me a little longer than an hour. I just have the advantage of kind of needing to plan ahead a little bit, so. But thank you everyone for joining me today and for putting up with um, making switches. And we'll just wait and see. I'm just waiting long enough for Leah to get the winner and then I will let you all go. <laughs> Kelly, 
if you can't believe, I know COVID's like the best excuse for everything, it feels like. We're so used to it. What are we going to do when it goes away? And then dirty glasses. I do understand that. Yep, Sienna, Sienna, I don't know if I pronounced that right. It does take a little while. And we can hope so, Patricia, maybe. <laughs> I remember when um, my husband had COVID once and he kept trying to work and everything. And I remember my kids were like, dad, you literally have the best reason in the world to take it easy. So just go rest. And he was like, oh, I guess you're right. Cause he's so used to just being sick and powering through, which he pretty much did anyway, but he's like, well, yeah, you know what? You're not wrong. Okay. Pink. Uh, so there we go. The winner today is Nanette MT. Congratulations. Um, hopefully I said that right. I don't know if that's abbreviation for your last name or abbreviation for Montana, which would make Leah happy. Um, but you've won today's $15 gift card. The info there, you can tag in the comment. Uh, email Leah, L-E-A, at pinkforstudio.com and give her a few days to get back to you with that code and you can have some fun shopping. So, all right, that's it for today. Um, we will only have um, Scrapbook Live on Friday, which will be here on YouTube, but at noon Central Standard Time. Um, so be on the lookout for that. We're not going to do Facebook Live on Thursday. Uh, just too much going on with Leah and I this week and we couldn't squeeze it in. So, but next week, I assume we'll probably have um, at least one or two lives as well. So we will see you back next week. So have a good rest of your week, everyone. And I'll talk to you again soon.